God bless you, Brother Mike. Your turn, you're okay? <clears throat> Brother Mike, we want you, to, want you to relax. This is nothing to be nervous about. And uh, we want you to relax. We, we, I just want to say again that we're, we're just honored to have you with us tonight. And uh, it's a blessing for, uh, for us to be able to hear uh, some of the things that you're going to share for us. You've already shared with me. And uh, I know you've shared in other, uh, in other uh, conversations and other fellowships and so forth. Uh, your wife is not with us tonight. She's probably listening. Yes. Yeah. She was listening this morning. She was listening this morning. And uh, so I hope I did okay. Uh, you tell her that I don't dress always she like that, okay? That, uh, she wanted about four copies of that message. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, uh, we, uh, we miss her. But uh, if, if you don't mind, we've, we've got a limited time. So we wanted to kind of just draw you into this like we did at lunch there today. Your experience goes back uh, in, in a... F- uh, if I'm recalling correctly, back to 1955. Yeah. And the start for you was a 10-day series of meetings that Brother Branham had in Macon, Georgia. Yes. And you lived about 150 miles or so from Macon, Georgia. 125 miles. And in that series of meetings, Brother Branham uh, did some extraordinary things, but the whole thing was brand new to you. Yes. And you were in a denominational church, yes. and you were 20 years old at the time. 19. 19 years old, going on 20. You were single? Yes. Just a new convert? Yes, 52. 52. And then your pastor told you, let's go to these meetings. Yes. And so a bunch of you went. Yes. Your life took a turn at that particular week. It was 10 days. Right after that series of meetings, Brother Brandon went off to Switzerland. Right. And so there was no immediate follow-up then, but you were introduced to Brother Brandon's ministry. Tell me a little bit about coming up to those meetings there and the first one which was contending for the faith or Jesus Christ the same is what the title of that sermon was and you came into that meeting as a young boy tell us what happened let me say I appreciate the invitation to give this testimony uh, to all you and Brother Scott in the church God bless you I was in a nominal church of a holiness church and uh, at that time, Brother Branham sponsored, you had to have the churches to sponsor him before he would come to that city. He changed that later in life because some people wouldn't invite him. And, but uh, being a young fella, I just followed along with the church and said, well, I'm going to myself. And so I had a 52 Catalina Pontiac and we headed to Macon, Georgia. My grandfather had another gentleman. And so I didn't know anything about Brother Branham, never heard anything about Brother Branham, didn't know the name, not anything about Brother Branham. And it was all new to me. So we got into Macon, Georgia. You had no idea that his ministry was different? No, I didn't know anything. We just knew that he had a healing ministry or something of that nature. No doctrine or anything of that nature. And so we got into Macon, Georgia, and... We, Brother Branham came to the platform and he came up and he said, uh, evening friends, and I just want to stop just a moment. There was something in that voice that caught me. I don't remember much about what he preached. I just remember him looking down at the congregation and when he said that, good evening friends, our evening friends, my whole life changed right there. Amen. And it still changed yes. tonight. There's something came over me that captivated me. I, just, I can't explain it. It was just like that you're encapsulated. You're, 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 you're caught up in another dimension. And it's only just for a few seconds, but it seems like eternity. And Brother Branham, he uh, preached... Uh, 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 Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. And of course, you had the healing services. And if you've ever been in Brother Branham's services, the people really uh, praise the Lord and give God honor and glory. And Brother Branham, he always glorified the Lord Jesus Christ in everything that he'd done. And so from that the meeting... The people had an expectation, didn't they? It was kind oh, yeah. of a natural expectation yes. that they had. Well, when, when Brother Branham uh, just came to the, the podium and said that, I knew that there was something that 
was in my heart that God had put in me in 1952 that related to that. But I didn't know the relationship. But I knew it related to that. And from that moment on and that day on, my life changed. And so we went back to the denomination. And after a while, uh, the word got around that uh, there was too many uh, tapeworms in the church. So you got the real to reels yes. then? Oh, yes. We Anything have. you could get your hands on after those meetings? Oh, yeah. Uh, we borrowed, uh, yes. The thing about it, uh, the ironic thing is that there was a preacher in Gainesville, Georgia, that had some of Brother Branham's tapes. We found out he had them, and we borrowed them from him. And then we used them against him. <laughs> and uh, that's the way we got into uh, Brother Branham's uh, message. Now, Mike, excuse us. me. There was 10 meetings. Yes. You, you didn't go to every meeting. No, no, you we had didn't to go work, to so you went no, back and forth. No, How I, many of that 10 would I you say? I can't remember. I okay. can't remember. But, uh, but we, you got I those did, tapes afterwards, and you start, all of a sudden now uh, you began to listen and you began to discover more things about Brother Branham's ministry. Yeah, well, what, what we did, we came back and we began to inquire about Brother Branham. We wanted to find out what this man was preaching. Because he was so, uh, uh, he wasn't a nominal preacher, it was extraordinary, peculiar, but spiritual. Sure. It was spiritual. And so we began to borrow these tapes from people, and we, we got our feet uh, wet in the message. And so we got a hold of a tape, I believe, from this, this brother that was, that was a preacher in this other church. And the name of that tape was uh, The Name of Jesus. And we got a hold of that tape, and uh, a sister that, uh, Brother George Canada, my uncle, I'll tell about him in a little bit. Uh, she said, uh, come in, we want you, I was staying with my aunt in that same house, and said, I want you to listen to this. She turned on that big reel to reel, and by the way, we've got over 400 of them at the church, if you'd like to have some of them. <laughs> reel to reel. Uh, and she said, I want you to hear this. And then her husband came in, said, I want you to hear this. My aunt said, I want you to hear this. My uncle, I want, the other uncle, I want you to hear this. And I heard Brother Branham say, show me in the scripture. And that's what caught me. Mm -hmm. Show me in the scripture where anybody was ever baptized any other way than in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, let me go back. In 1952, I went to Detroit, Michigan to work. And uh, my uncle, I had a, a younger uncle, that, and had a couple of uncles up there working, and I was going to get a job, and I did get a job. But we went into this bookstore. He wanted to show me a little old trick, and I opened the thing up, and it shocked me. But I just got saved, and I saw a book that said, Cruden's Concordance. Cruden's Concordance. And so I bought that thing for $2. Now, you can't hardly tell this all mattered up today. I bought me another one. And I, I, I brought that home, and I heard Brother Branham say, show me in the scripture. I got my Cruden's Concordance down. And I run every scripture on water mm. baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Well, when I did, it's just like I was caught up in another rapture. <laughs> because I was taught in the Trinity. I was taught to be a Trinitarian. And everyone was, basically. Oh, yeah, everybody was. Basically, everyone was. And Brother Branham changed the whole thing of this thing all over the United States and the world as far as that goes. Uh, in, in water baptism, the way it should be. Uh, so we, uh, we began to come out of denomination then, and then we began to talk to other people, and we began to get associated with some people in Athens, Georgia, and Atlanta, Georgia, and up in Tennessee, and around, and uh, Brother Henry Green, Brother uh, Albert Green, who baptized me, and several of us, and we began to come out of denominations, and we uh, was coming out, and our preacher, he would say, now, I want everybody here tonight. I've got a good message. I've got something that you need to hear. He knew we was going to slip out. <laughs> uh, because we started slipping out and going in, in, uh, to other places, and we couldn't find nobody to believe that, so we just believed it ourselves, started services. Mm. And we met in houses and places, and people began to come, and people uh, 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 just together. And then... We began to understand Brother Brown's message more. I saw all those healings, and that got my attention. And the discerning that he had. And I began to hear what he said on these tapes about uh, the things that Jesus had done. 
And then I saw him do the same thing. So I said, man, I've been on the wrong, in the wrong pew in the wrong church. <laughs> you ought to do something about this. And so we began to meet in home sometime, and then we'd, uh, we started a little old church, storefront church. And we had services there, and we crammed about 80 and 90 people in that little old church. Angie can tell you about it. She was a baby then, and, uh, about that time. And uh, from that, there's about four or five churches that were started from Gainesville, Georgia, in Brother Branham, baptizing. And that made a cohesiveness to us because everybody was against us. You're baptizing in the name of the Lord yes, Jesus sir. Christ now, which was, which now, was unique well, we back had, in we, we, we wasn't baptized that way. We were, just, we were fighting the, the, the Pentecostal doctrine. Sure. And we were taken up for Brother Branham and defending that, that, that message that, teaching, yeah. that we had, okay. the part that we had. Okay. But let me say in the beginning... When we began to get deeper into the message of Brother Branham, I, I thank God for the healings and the discernment, but it moved me from that to the Word. Hmm. It moved me to hmm. the Word. Brother Mike, you went from place to place then where you've, you found out where Brother Branham was preaching and you would yes. visit in different meetings, uh, different locations around, I think, Birmingham, Alabama, you said, yes. and some different places. Yes. Uh, and then you started eventually going to uh, Jeffersonville. Yes, yes. You were up there for the seals and yes, all the way out yes. through marriage and divorce and so forth. Yes, yes. Now, your uncle, George, had yes. a speech impediment. Yes. And in 1962, right. you were in a meeting with him. Right. Tell us about that. All right. You want to tell me that first? Yes, sir. Okay. My uncle, George Canada, uh, my daddy's brother, had a very, very impediment of speech. He would be in a conversation and he might start one word and you'd wait a minute before you got another one. Hmm. Well, we were, we were sitting, we went to Columbia, South Carolina in 1962, and my aunt and my uncle and Brother George and myself. And I was sitting here, Brother George was sitting here, and my aunt was sitting there, and my uncle was sitting here, other uncle. And uh, Brother Brandon had preached a hard message in that Assembly of God Church. I remember he really bared down on holiness. And so he got into the discerning, and I was sitting here, and Brother George was sitting here, and Brother George uh, jumped a little bit and, uh, as the spirit was moving around, and he just moved a little bit. But Brother Brown looked directly at me. Now, this is the second time that I had this experience of a confrontation with Brother Branham, just direct. When he said, evening friends, I looked direct at him and he was looking out. And then uh, he looked and he looked directly at me. Now, I was only just a young fellow then and I could see good without glasses. And he looked at me and he said, no, it's a younger fellow. No, no. He said, it's you that jumped. And Brother George had just jumped hmm. a little bit. And, but when Brother Random looked at me, I, I was in another world. I, don't, I, I can't explain it. It's so peculiar. It's so out of, uh, of nature and out of kilter. The spirit, just for a moment, while he looked at me, he said, no, it's you that jumped. He said, impediment of speech. Hmm. And he told him that God would heal impediment of speech if he would believe. Now, here I want to tell you that here tonight, you may be sick. You may need healing. And the preacher pray for you and nothing happened. You may believe for a month or a year. It was several years. I saw Brother George year after year gradually lose his impediment of speech. Hmm. Hmm. So don't give up. Is he still alive, Brother Mike? No. Yes, yes he's still alive. Okay. He just wasn't able to come here. Okay. But... Uh, uh, plenty of people, they, there's denominational people in Gainesville, Georgia, can confirm what I, the other testimonies that I'm going to say here. Huh. But they wasn't in uh, Columbia. But uh, he can speak just as good as we, call, uh, we can now. He's 85. He's got some problems. But uh, he's got a good, good, a good vocabulary, and he can speak it. There's no impediment of speech. Hmm. So take courage. Amen. These signs shall follow them that believe. Lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. Brother Mike, you yes. had, I'm, I'm jumping a little bit, but you had a, a, a grandmother who was very important to you. Yes, yes. And your grandmother was not in Brother Branham's meetings, as far as I understand. 
My but grandmother. She was a holiness person. Yes, she was a, a real holiness person. She Tell used us to, what she wrote in her Bible. Yeah. She, she uh, used to talk to me about getting saved, and no way I could get saved, no conviction. But one day, conviction hit me. But my grandmother was very religious. She didn't know anything about Brother Branham that I know of. And my uncle would tell you the same thing, that he never heard her say anything about Brother Branham or anything. But she wrote in the flyleaf of her Bible. This is about, I know, she died in 1950, so it was before that. And that was before I came in, even got saved, and Brother Branham's, and come in, into Brother Branham's ministry message. She wrote in the flyleaf of her Bible that before the end, that God would send Elijah the prophet, Amen. and he would be a Gentile. Hmm. No, uh, that's no she, never, she never saw Brother Branham. Never saw Brother Branham. I've never heard that word Brother Branham hmm. from her. This is before Brother Branham ever came it's amazing. On, uh, in the south or anywhere. So you, you have all these, all these confirmations now, one after yeah, the yeah, other, yeah. and you're seeing God is doing something supernatural yes, in yes, this yes. ministry and so forth. Yes. So you came up to, and, and I'm jumping again up to 1965 now, and you were... Uh, at the Branham, or you were at the Parkview School, yes. marriage and divorce meeting. Yes. And Ben Bryant took you around to the back. Right. You had an opportunity to meet Brother Branham. Yes. And this is the third time you had that experience yes, yes. of how he kind of looked right through you. Yes, yes. Tell us about that. We were, uh, by the way, we sing at the tabernacle, we sing at marriage and divorce. And Ben Bryant took us back and he said, You want to meet Brother Branham? Well, that was, oh, that was thrill me to death. So we went back, and just in a, minute, a couple of minutes, Brother Random came in. And he walked up, and he was standing just a little higher up the steps to go up to the auditorium. And he reached out, and he shook my hand. And when he did, he looked right at me, and I wanted to look around and see who he was looking at. Them little beady eyes of his just clear through you. And then the Spirit of God just come down and overwhelm you there. But it only lasts just a few seconds. And Brother Branham, shaking his hand, going to preach marriage and divorce, his hand was almost wet with water when I shook his hands. And he said to Ben Bright and to Brother Robert Tatum and Brother George Cannon and myself, he said, we've come to a crucial hour. I want you all to be praying for me. Mm. And uh, that was three times that I had that experience. Mm. And every time the experience got greater because I had been studying the message and looking beyond the healings and the miracles and got myself sort of solidified in the message and then meeting Brother Brown for that third time, it just seemed like that, that I was in eternity. Uh, I can't explain it, but it's, it's just so phenomenal. And let me explain a few healings that I were okay. in. Okay. Now in the, the Branham Tabernacle, there was a lady, her, her name is Betty Cowart, and she lived in Athens, Georgia, about 40 miles, and we've been associated with her, and she sang on the radio, and she sang in churches, and we had fellowship, we know each other, and so forth. And Brother Branham called her out in the, in the audience, and he said, you there in that white dress, said, you're from Georgia and told her what it was wrong with her and so forth. And then there was a man, uh, <clears throat> Brother Duncan. He was from Athens, Georgia, a good friend of mine, been in his house, been to church with him and all. He's passed on now. And Brother Brown looked at him and he said, Brother, Brother Duncan from Georgia, said you got back trouble. This is in Branham Tabernacle? No, uh, uh, that was in the Branham Tabernacle, okay. right. right. And so, we went on to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Chattanooga, Tennessee. And Brother Brown was preaching there in, in uh, 62, I guess it is, 58 or 62, 50, 58. And there was a man that Brother Brown called out in that meeting. And he was a businessman, and he was a preacher. And he, was, uh, he uh, had a business in Gainesville, Georgia. He had two or three businesses, and he had a business there at this time. But he lived in Atlanta, Georgia. So Brother Branham, he was looking around and he, he was trying to find out who it was that was having faith and pulling mm -hmm. on him. And he looked at him and he says, uh, I'm a stranger to you. And, and, and 
he, he nodded, yes, yes, I'm a stranger to you, and you don't know me, and I don't know you. And he said, would you believe me to be his prophet if, if I told you what was wrong with you? He nodded that he would. And Brother Ram says, uh, you've got uh, uh, sugar diabetes. It's on the tapes. You can find it. He said, you've got sugar diabetes. And says, uh, you're not from this state. You're from Atlanta, Georgia, Mr. Adams. Everybody knew L.B. Adams in Gainesville, Georgia. He lived in Atlanta, but he had these, he trans went back and forth mm. and had these businesses there. Mm. And he was a religious fellow, sort of on the hole in his side. And there you are in that atmosphere, and Brother Brown calling out somebody that you know almost personally. Mm. Yeah. Knows where his business is in, mm. right there. And, of course, was in the meetings in Greenville, South Carolina, too, Birmingham, Alabama. Brother Mike, let me, let me interrupt and ask you, these people that you knew, Oh, yes. After, yeah, and, and after they were healed and after they, you, know, you came away from the meetings and yeah. so forth, what did they say about this experience? Well, uh, the, I don't know what Mr. Adams said, but I do know what Brother Duncan did and Sister Coward. It just made a cohesiveness to all of us. It, it made a bond. Okay. It okay. made a bond in all of us. And we began to worship and suffer the persecution together mm. <laughs> of coming out and, and following Brother Branham's Because ministry. Brother Branham's ministry was controversial. Oh, very of the things that he taught. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, they began to turn against us, and they, they said all, all they just said, uh, following Brother Branham's ministry would ruin your life, ruin your ministry, ruin your salvation. It'll damn you, they say. Mm. All that just personally in your face. But, you know, it was good to have some company. Yes. Yeah. It was good. You know, the Lord sent his people out two by two. Yes. And we had some, we had some shoulders to lean on, and we had some all-night prayer meetings, too. Mm. Mm. It really did. But what it did, it made me want to know the Bible more. Mm. I saw in Brother Branham more than a man. I saw in Brother Branham more than a prophet. I saw something of the Son of Man. It was the Spirit of Jesus Christ in William Marion Branham, in, a, in his body doing the same thing that Jesus did when he was here. And I saw it with my own eyes. Amen. Now, that don't mean that I'm any better. Longevity. The Bible said, Blessed is he believeth and hath not seen. Mm -hmm. But I'm so glad as a young man that I got to see these things that God did. Brother Mike, you were there in the, in the preaching of the seven seals. Yes. And uh, even based on some of the things that Brother Branham said in the preaching of the seven seal, there was a real nervous excitement. Oh, yes. In the seventh seal because people thought this was going to be the end. The rapture would take place. Yes. What did you think when Brother Branham preached the seventh seal? Well, you, you told us today that when you came out of church sometimes in Branham Tabernacle, you come out of the morning service and get right back in line again. Right. Somebody bring, would bring you food. Yes, sir. Because the lineup would start immediately that after the morning the service. So now the seventh seal now in March 63. Right. And he has questions and answers in the morning. Yes. Seven seal is at night. Mm -hmm. Tell me what it was like to be there. Well, we had such a great anticipation of the seventh seal because Brother Branham on the fourth seal and others, he really talked about the coming of the Lord yeah. and the seals being opened yeah. and of the Lord's coming. And we were on, uh, really, we just thought it might just have many time. Really. And we were under such a great anticipation mm -hmm. that when we were in the morning service, I have walked out of one door over to another door and got in line and stayed there for several hours and somebody brought me a hot dog or something and something to drink just to make sure that I was there when he preached them seven seals. But I didn't know if this might be my going home time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I you still were believe... The only, you were the only one who was thinking no, that No, 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 no. Not at all. And, and this is the thing that held us together. This is the glue that held us together, the revelation. Mm -hmm. we, didn't, we didn't argue about what Brother Ram said. We just believed it. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, just, we just took it face value for what it was. And after we, and I've always been a, 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 a rabid uh, student of reading the Bible. Always. When I first got saved, I carried a testament everywhere. And I, 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 got, I had so much conviction that when I read Revelations, I felt condemned because the Bible said, let him that read it here mm -hmm. uh, or hear what the Spirit, and I felt like I ought to tell everybody. Mm. 
because I was so involved in sure, it. Sure. And so I memorized a lot of scriptures. And right around, he would come by with these things uh, about, uh, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. Well, I said, there was a man sent from God whose name was William Branham. Sure. He, uh, the, for, the first forerunner and the last forerunner, mm -hmm. the, the ministry, first mm -hmm. and the last. And that's what kept us from these hideous spirits and mean-spirited people. And we really got to the place we felt sorry for them because they didn't know no better. Mm -hmm. And then go back to my, to my grandmother. I believe that that seed came through my grandmother mm -hmm. and some through my grandfather, but more through my grandmother. You remember in the Bible where Paul said to Timothy, this faith that was in your yes. grandmother and in your mother, yeah. Eunice and Lois? Yes. And I believe every one of us, you were in him before the foundation of the world. And God brought us together here tonight. We didn't come here by happenstance. Mm -hmm. We're here by design. Mm -hmm. Brother Mike, sometimes, you know, listening to some of your generation talk about these experiences, Brother Branham, I, I often marvel at what it must have felt like to have heard that Brother Branham was in an, ac in an accident. Yes. And nobody was expecting that to happen the way it did, the time that it did. And all of a sudden, everybody's thrust into this place where, mm -hmm. you know, Brother Branham could be taken from us. Yes. And even though we don't worship Brother Branham, right, we right. don't look to him as that, right. uh, he was obviously a central figure Certainly. for so many people uh, back in that day. I mean, yes. People drove from far and wide to come and yes. be in Branham Tabernacle or, or the different meetings that were going on. Mm -hmm. Tell us what happened in that time period when you found out that he was in that accident. First of all, you didn't believe that he was going to die. No. And then tell us a little bit about the funeral. Okay. When Brother Ryan was in the accident, naturally, we believe that all things work together to good, to them that love God. I still believe that with all my heart. But it was such a letdown. Uh, uh, I remember my Uncle George coming to look me up and tell me that Brother Branham had died. Well, it's just like your world falls apart. Here's your leader. Here's your David against Goliath. Here's a man that's standing against the whole world, against the religious world, the demons of darkness. And he's gone. Mm. He's gone. But you know, in all of that, in the back of your mind and in your soul, that word's been planted there. And, and, and that anchor helped us, mm -hmm. and it helped me, above the grief mm -hmm. and the sorrow. And of course, you know, you say, well, Lord, maybe he's going to raise up from the dead. Who knows? I don't know. I mean, you want that to happen. Man, I hear your prophet's gone. But then you reconcile yourself. What is God's will? Mm -hmm. Then the message comes back to you of what the message is. Mm -hmm. I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and terrible day of the Lord. And he'll turn the hearts of the children back to the fathers. And then, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. These scriptures help me. Because as John the Baptist is brother in 1933 on the Ohio River, as the story goes, and you know it as well as I do, he said, as John the Baptist forerun his first coming, your message will forerun the second coming. So I went back to the Word. And let, me, let me say to you, friend, in your darkest hours and heartaches and sorrows that it was in mine, you can imagine how I felt seeing eye to eye a prophet sitting next to somebody that is kin to me with an impediment of speech and see a gradual healing calling out my friends in Athens, Georgia. Mm. Mr. Adams that had their businesses in Gainesville. All these things brought back in the three times that I had this peculiar spirit of God that came to me. I went back and I relied upon what God had done in my life personally. Mm. Always remember, friend, you've got to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm. And, and so... What we did, we, we began to talk to one another and cry, pray, seek the Lord. 
And then you know all of the things that happen after that and all, and you hear that and you hear this and you hear that. And you finally just reconcile yourself. Well, Lord, it's in your hands. And I'm in your hands. Mm. This message is in your hands. And I think of the, the song that Brother Branham sang and added a verse to it. And in that song, On the Wings of a Snow White Dove, that wounded dove made it into the camp got his message over. Mm. Now I do believe that we have, as Brother Ram said on uh, a tape, Grace, I believe, uh, amazing, uh, Grace, he said that the, the faith to make a rapture is in the message. Mm. I believe it. Mm-hmm. I believe that with all my heart. Mm. You say, why do you say that? You put that confidence in a man? No. It was God speaking. Yes. It was not a man speaking. Sure. Uh-uh. Brother Brown was a humble man. He was not a man that wanted praise. He just wanted you to recognize the one that he loved and praised. That's right. I remember this. Let me just tell Brother Lee Vale, when some people wanted to make Brother Branham God, and that's not nothing new anyway. Brother Vale said, I went to Brother Branham's house and he was... His wife had towels that was putting on him. He was rolling on the bed and says, Oh God, what have I done to deserve Mm. this? And we had to live with all of that. And you had to live with it. But look what the disciples live with. Look what the prophets live with. And we are so privileged to be here in the end time, the greatest day that we could ever live in. Mm. And I think of the song the brother sang, Only Believe. Brother Dawson Riley dead now, good friend of Brother Branham. Brother Branham said, Brother Dawson, he said, sometimes just sing that song, Only Believe. Said that angel really likes that song. He said he might just come down there to see you. Mm. All right. Tell us about the funeral, Brother Mike, and your right. experience there. Yes, I want to tell about this too. I want you to know that I could speak all night. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much going through my mind. But anyway, at Brother Branham's funeral, and it was terrible. That was just terrible. It was just terrible. And we had speakers there that had been with Brother Branham, but had turned, I think, into the secular world. And Brother Branham had taken this as the lone eagle on himself. And so we we were just crying our eyes out. And so after the funeral, we came out of uh, the Branham Tabernacle. Everybody was in a solemn attitude. But I looked up and I looked around and everywhere you looked, no matter where you looked, it was amber color. Mm. Now I've got people that will testify to what I'm saying. There was in, uh, Brother George Cantor was in that. A couple of fellows is dead and there's another one. There's three of us that we, looked, uh, that we came down the road and we were in Kentucky and the sky and all around us was still amber. I couldn't understand that. Everywhere you looked. And under the, after the Brandon Tamar, I couldn't see him taking Brother Brown with the amulets. And everything is just amber looking. And then my mind goes back, Brother Brandon says, friend, can you see that amber light hanging over that person? Mm-hmm. And here, here, here God is in the universe. Mm-hmm. All around me, mm-hmm. the same spirit that when Brother Brown said, evening friends, was right there. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget. And we came down the road and, and, and just praising God for it. And then we have to, we have to you know, said, uh, our God is dead now. The nominations. Yeah, where's he at? The women were praying for God to kill him because he preached against short hair and stuff. They really done that. Mm. Yes, sir. They had prayer meetings for, for God to take William Branham off the scene. And when he left, they said, thank you, Lord. Mm. I hate to see them on that day. But anyway, we came back and we began to, to really pray and seek the message of this hour and to dedicate ourselves to God and to the word that Brother Branham spoke. You will not make it, friend, in a rapture without this word. As Brother Barry preached this morning. Do all these things, give your body to be burned, have knowledge to understand all mysteries. 
All these things. But you must be word born bride. Amen. I believe with all my heart here tonight with my testimony that as God sent Eleazar to find Abraham's son a wife, I believe with all my heart that there's a bride of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. on this earth Amen. now. We may not be perfect, but I've been forgiven. Amen. And I know where an altar is. And I know there's a fountain filled with blood. Amen. Drawn from Emmanuel's blood. Amen. And let me tell you, the, the blood, and Brother Branham stresses this, is on the Word. Sure. Yes. That's the most powerful thing that you could do. And Brother Branham said, if you want to, he said, the right mental attitude toward any promise that God said will bring it to pass. Amen. And Brother Branham said this, and this is a prophet speaking. And I'm going to take him at his word. Now, I want you to take him at his word. He said, I have never asked God for anything that he didn't give it to me. Hmm. Or tell me why that he wouldn't. He said, if he done it for me, he'll do it for you. Amen. My. So I, I'm encouraged tonight. Now, I've been speaking as a 19-year-old fellow. I'm... 75 years ago, I know you don't believe it. <laughs> but I still have not changed what I believe about this message. In fact, I'm clinging a little bit more close to it than I ever have. I'm getting nearer home than I were yesterday. And you young people here, let me tell you something. When I was a young boy, 19 years old, and I'm not criticizing this, brother. Preach this morning. We don't, it don't cost me nothing to criticize, find fault, you, re, uh, you either. But as a 19-year-old boy, I wanted to stay around the older people. Hmm. There were some older people that was in them denominations that came out, and they passed on pretty well, and, 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 and they gone on to the reward, but they had something about God, and I was a young fella. And I worked at a grocery store, and I'd get off on my dinner hour, and I'd go over to Gainesville Mill to a brother's house, Brother Tatum, Roland Tatum, and I wanted to sit and listen to him talk about the Bible and Jesus. I was just enthralled about that. Mm. And I, I didn't want to do anything of the world. I didn't want to go anywhere except to church. Now let me tell you something. You said, we come to church three times a week. You ain't got nothing on me. I've been in church six and eight times a week. And if you don't believe it, ask Angie. She can tell you that she's uh, been up at two o'clock in the morning before she got home when we were in these meetings. Our hearts was in it. In fact, God made it that way because we didn't have no other friends. Mm. We had to lean on each other. Mm. <laughs> and so I'm thankful tonight for, for the love of God and the Spirit of God and I'd rather live in this age. Brother Brown said this is the greatest age mm -hmm. that you could ever live in. Yeah. And let me say this. We all got trials. We all got troubles. We got temptations. We got sorrow. Satan's not going to let you alone. Just remember, in the Garden of Eden, there was two trees. There's still two trees. And Satan's right there. Don't never forget it. But always remember... There's a fountain filled with blood. Amen. And that God loves you more than he loves anybody in this world. More than anybody. He died for you and rose again. And this message, one day will stand at the judgment. I remember Brother Brandon saying one time of a person, he said something about didn't believe in water baptism. And the man, Brother Brown said, it'll be played back to you on the judgment day. Yes. So if you've ever heard, if you've ever heard, and be careful how you hear, but if you've ever heard and you've got something that's not here, that's only the way to your soul. And the mind, you've got to get it in your mind, but it's got to be put into your soul because that's what's born again. Yes. And the soul that sinneth, it'll yes. die. But you see, God loved you before the foundation of the world. Amen. 
and wrote your name in a book. Mm -hmm. And he wrote my name in a book. And that's what I'm concerned about. Amen. And you need to be concerned about your name on that book. So you young people, take courage. There's more to the world than, than you think there are. There's God in this world. But He's in His Word. And you'll find Him in this revelation. For we are built upon the revelation of who Jesus Christ was. And we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ Himself being the chief cornerstone. Amen. Now let me tell you something. I didn't know how to read my Bible until I found out who William Branham was and heard him preach. Hmm. Did you? Oh, you had it all figured out, huh? <laughs> no, we didn't, did we? I didn't know how to read my Bible. And I'd read that thing through. Hmm. I, I've read the Bible through. And I've uh, tore up Bibles and Bibles old and all like that. But when Brother Randall came out, he said, now here, Mike, here's the way it is. And I was a good student, and I listened to what he said. And I'm thankful tonight. Mm. And I'll tell you one thing. I want to spend eternity with every one of you. But God bless you. Brother Mike, let me ask you. You know, you, you were in those meetings, many of those meetings in Branham Tabernacle, and listened to those sermons and so forth. And listening to a sermon like Christ and Mr. God Revealed, which is a couple of hours long. Yes, yes. And enjoying it, you know, yes, and yes, the atmosphere yes, yes. and everything else and what went on. Now when you listen to those sermons, mm -hmm. when you put them on now, yeah. is it different? Yes, it is. Why? Because I understand it. So your understanding is growing. My understanding has is, is, is evolved more and more and more and more. Mm. And it, it evolves to where you just... Uh, you're, you just can't explain what's, what's being revealed to you. Mm. Tongue can't tell it. Uh, we said, the reason I say that, I said in the Branham Tabernacle before it was remodeled and had air conditioned, and Brother Brown preaching, future home there to the bride. That's long messages. Mm -hmm. Sweat rolling off of you this way, people getting up and going this way and everything, and you just can't comprehend it. Mm. So you come back and you get the tape. You sit down in your easy chair. And forget about everything else and listen to what the man said. Every word. The Bible said every word. Every word. Every word. And so when we came into the message, we latched on just like the first fish that we caught. Mm -hmm. Water baptism in the name of mm -hmm. Jesus. And here we went. Oh, this was it. Then we really got in hot water in serpent seed. Oh, Lord. Who ever heard of that doctrine? That's a Branhamite doctrine. And you are a Branhamite. Well, praise God. <laughs> praise God. I don't, know of a, I don't know of a preacher in the United States of America would stand behind a pulpit and say, mm -hmm. if I preached you the truth, let him come. Right. He says, now, let's just sing mm -hmm. only believe. Mm -hmm. Real soft. Sure. Say, now, you know, I'm stalling. I'm waiting. He said, he's here now. Amen. He said, I take every spirit mm -hmm. in this place under my control. Amen. And he did. Mm. <laughs> and then he began to, he, could, he was so close to God that he could set himself apart. Set himself as, apart from himself. And tell us, a sister or brother, your name is so-and-so. You came from a doctor. And if you'll just wait just a second, when that truck passes by your house, I'll tell you the number of your house that you live in. Mm. <laughs> he not only knew what was back then, he knew what was going on right there. Mm. And you're sitting there and you, 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 and you hear Brother Branham say all those things. And he takes all those spirits and then he begins to discern and then he, he shakes his head and he said, now, I don't know what he told you. But whatever he told you was the truth. And then he said, now I know what he told you. Mm. He said, so and so, so and so, so and so. Mm. Let me tell you, Brother Branham had a lot of campaign managers that came and went. But not a one of them will tell you to this day. And I heard this from older people that was in the message. Not a one of them will tell you that not one time did that discernment ever fail. Mm. Or was he wrong? when he discerned the, the, the people. Mm. Now, if that be true, and that's a minor scale, you know, the real thing is the Word. If that be true, how much more 
is the word. Yes. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Mm -hmm. So I admonish the young people. This world don't hold nothing for you. Oh, they'll pop and pay you, take your money, pat you on the back, call your brother, call your sister. And all the time is Satan leading you the wrong way. You owe your life to God. And let me say this, friend. You did not choose God. You didn't choose this message. God chose you. The Bible says, of his own will beget he Amen. you. Amen. Wonderful. Praise God. You know I'm a preacher. <laughs> Brother Mike, uh, I... I really appreciate you sharing those things uh, with us. And I want to say this too. I appreciate the fact that uh, coming from those early years and still holding a balance in the word and having a love for the word and not just the signs and wonders. Right, right. That's, that's a commendable thing. That's a great thing. Yeah. Because people, people drifted after Brother Brandon went because there was no more signs and wonders. There were no more supernatural miracles happening like that mm -hmm. in his ministry. Mm -hmm. And they went this way and they went that way. But to hear you today realizing and recognizing that, you know, the message was the most important thing. Yes. And those yes. other signs were there to yes. attract the attention of the people and, you know, to get their hearts in tune for a fresh message yes. from God. And then to come through all of that and after all the fanaticism that always arises after a move of God and, and to still hear your love for the message of the hour, I, I think that's a, that's a wonderful thing. That's a commendable thing. And I, I appreciate that. I appreciate you taking the time and, and sharing uh, your experiences with us tonight. I thank you for that, Brother uh, Coffee. You know, he never said it would be an easy road. Never said. He said, in your own family, father against mother, daughter against brother, sister, brother, in-laws. He said, I didn't come to bring peace. Hmm. I come to bring a sword. And a lot of you have been pierced through with the best friends you got. Might have been your dad, your mother, your friend, your boss man. You've been pierced through over and over again. But there was something that held you. Hmm. Brother Branham, his wife and daughter laying in the moor. The devil as he preached this morning. The man asked Brother Branham, said, did you keep your religion? He said, no, it kept me. Yes, sir. Amen. And so this message will keep you. Now, I don't have much joy in the world. Like I said, I go to Walmart and I just nearly die to see the people, <laughs> young people and all this thing. And then when I see somebody's dressed, I appreciate that. You don't want to go and shake their hand if they're dressed at least decent, even if they're not a Christian. <laughs> That's the truth. And then, then you... You come back and you reevaluate all of this, and you have to say, Lord, why did you love me? What, are, what could I have ever done? Who am I? Mm. What, what could I ever do? And so I, I think that the death of Brother Branham, as you asked me, galvanized me and others, galvanized us around the Word as we were getting away from the signs and the wonders and miracles, or we call them the fishes and the lowers, it galvanized me to study this message. Mm. One other thing that I want to say, and it's very important. If you don't keep your mind upon God, Brother Branham says this. He said, if your mind's not on God, God can't speak to you. Mm. Think about it. Mm. You ever try to talk to somebody and they ain't listening? You say, you ain't listening to me. I'm talking to you. You ain't listening to me. Well, you say, well, I love God and all like that, and you're thinking about something else. But the Lord ain't. He's God, and you've got to fear Him. Amen. And to fear Him is to love Him. Amen. And all God requires is, it's very simple. He said, in the day that you seek me with all your heart, that's the day you'll find me. Yes. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Mike. Thank you. God bless you.
I wonder, would you be willing to pray for us as an assembly and just offer a word of prayer here as we yes. end our service? Why don't we stand to our feet tonight? And if you have a need tonight, hold that need before God and believe that God's able to minister to that need tonight, whatever it is. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you tonight for all your love and all your mercy. I thank you for the travels that we made all the